February 11th, 2023. Last night there was a party for a young artist uptown. I didn't really want to go because I'd seen the work and wasn't crazy about it. But I knew Claudine would be there and I hadn't seen her since she moved back from Berlin. I was glad I went. It had been gray all day. It rained. Everyone who came into the gallery that day had trapped water around, which made perfect sense of the show because one of the main themes is transience. And I always think of water as a transient substance. The sky had cleared by the time I left, and I decided to walk to the party from the gallery. Because when I got outside, the air had a magic twinge in it. That rare thing in the city where you need to be moving, and it feels electric. And your mind is talking to you in this perfect way, and it feels so good to be walking and looking around like nobody can see you. It reminded me of a dream I used to have when I was little. Like nobody can see you. It reminded me of a dream I used to have when I was little. February 11th. Charlotte came home from school with a scratch across her forehead. She wouldn't tell me how it had happened until I swore to her I'd keep it a secret. It made me nervous, but... It wasn't a deep scratch. I only noticed it when I was brushing her hair. But she seemed really private about it. Like it had been the mark in some secret ritual she'd been a part of. Sometimes watching her grow up makes me feel like I'm floating in outer space. Like this is her world and I'm just visiting. When she tells me what she's learned about her life, I'm really taken aback sometimes. Like the first time you hear friends speak in a different language, their native language, a language you don't know. February 11th. When I was little, I had dreams about flying through the city at night while my parents were asleep. Freedom of constraints or limitations in waking life. In the dream, I was flying up First Avenue, looking through all the high up windows. Most people were asleep inside their apartments or watching television or playing board games. And there were a lot of yellow cabs on the street. I felt perfectly safe. Clear black sky and feel like I could fly forever. List of constraints. Maybe it'll help. Number one, time. Number two, expectations. Number three, language. Number four, the speed. scraps of canvas and trash from the flower district to make nests. Studying the architecture of nests she finds in Central Park. Some of the feathers she collected are really beautiful. Yasmin scares me a little. I don't think she takes good care of herself. I think she needs to go out and have more fun. I told her to wear gloves when she handles the trash. She looked at me with pity after I said it, like, Oh, poor you, you're so afraid. It made me kind of angry. The way I get angry at a great work of art for making me feel small. 
February 11th. Listen to Disintegration on the subway to Brooklyn. About Brooklyn. Brooklyn. February 11th. Listen to Disintegration on the subway to Brooklyn. Thinking about my old angst. The duty of youth was to challenge corruption. That's what it used to be. I don't know what the duty of youth is anymore. It's so overwhelming and enormous, and it's also so banal. Maybe ideology is a luxury. Maybe you need to divorce yourself from society to live ideologically. I don't know how else to challenge corruption than to just opt out. Move to the country somewhere and light candles. Take photographs of grass and insects and clouds. Raise Charlotte on food from our garden, water from our own well, a few chickens. Oh, and I dreamed of doing that when we first met. February 11th. Today at work, someone came in off the street and asked for a recommendation for a quiet place to sit and read. I couldn't think of anywhere. Not one place in the neighborhood. He looked at the art for a while, and then he went back out into the rain. I went into my office and shut the door and read a book. I didn't check my email or answer the phone. I need to do that more often. Yasmin told me about a Sufi legend about birds. I tried retelling it to Charlotte at bedtime, but I'm sure I got it wrong. In the story, every bird represents a human fault. And there are a thousand birds. The birds decide to go off in search of their litter. They have to cross seven valleys to find her. Love. Knowledge. Detachment. Unity. Wonderment. Annihilation. Or something else. When they realize there's this different way ahead, when they realize there's this difficult way ahead, most of them make up an excuse and go home. The nightingale, the parrot, the peacock. They almost all quit. In the end, only 30 birds make it. When they get to where they're going, they find a lake and look down and see themselves in the reflection. And they realize that they're their own leader. Together, they've been guiding themselves. I don't know. Yasmin didn't go on to explain what it meant to her. I don't feel like I'm looking for a leader. I know what my leader is. It's gravity. It's the weight of my life keeping me on the ground.